let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Give him the said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. This is the day which the Lord has blessed. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. presence on this your holy Sabbath day giving you thanks and praise for all that you have done and still doing in our lives Lord you are such a merciful and gracious God you send rain upon the just and upon the unjust you provide for every living creature and father we just give you the thank we just give you thanks for all that you continue to do for us. You withhold no good things from your children. Lord, you, you, you continue to open the windows of heaven, pouring out blessings upon us that there, there, there is not room enough to receive it. Father, we want to say thank you. And Lord, 
we are sinners in need of a savior yes. and there's no one there's no savior like you That's right. and so father we come laying all our cares our burdens at your footstool and we open our hearts and our lips to give you praise and thanks for all that you continue to do for each one of us we acknowledge your presence that you are with us and we pray, oh God, that you will bless each and every person here today. That when we leave this place, we can say it was good to, in, to be in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for what you're about to do for each one of us. And now we ask that you will coordinate this service in such a way that your name will be glorified and each one who entered these doors will be blessed. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say amen. At this time, we turn to our formation of faith as we read, recite together, which is in Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14. Let us read together. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pledges on my holy day, and call the Sabbath to the light, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speak in thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high place of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is good, isn't he? I know I had a blessed week, and I'm sure you did too. So let us say that God is awesome. You don't believe God is awesome? Well, we're very quiet this morning. So let's give him a big that God is awesome. Is awesome. Amen. It's good to have each and every one of us here today. At this time, I would like to acknowledge all our guests. If you're here with us for the first time, would you please stand? Okay, well, I believe everybody feels at home this morning. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Jenks Brutus, the officers and members of Shiloh, we welcome each and every guest and member here this morning. We hope that you will have a blessed Sabbath day and that God will be with you in all that we do and say, have a happy Sabbath. At this time, I have some announcements to make. Oh, before I do that, I'd like to just say, it's good to see Sister Lynette Miller in the house this morning. Amen. It's always a blessing when Sister Lynette is here, so we thank God for bringing her here this morning to worship with us. Amen. Um, remember that pastor has office hours every second and fourth Wednesdays, so if you'd like to meet with him, he's here from 2.30 to 6 p.m. on those days. There is a, our Bible study will begin at 4.30 p.m. today, right here in the sanctuary, and immediately after um, the Bible study, I believe there is a Pathfinder induction ceremony right here at, after um, Bible study. They're asking all Pathfinders to please be in your Class A uniform for today. And that is so that they can have inspections also. Also, next week, Sabbath, the New England South Pathfinder Rally Day and Investiture Service will be at Faith Seventh Day Adventist Church in Hartford. And all Pathfinders, you're asked to please be there by 10 a.m. in your Class A uniform. Our next church board meeting is on October 21st at 10 a.m. Let us remember our prayer meeting on Wednesday nights here at 7 o'clock p.m. I believe in two weeks we will be celebrating our family and friends day here. We're asking everyone to please invite someone. If everybody in here invite one person, then we'll have a full house. So please invite your family and friends. Invitations are available. You can see Sister Monica Fletcher for those. On October 27th, it's a big day here at Shiloh. It's a combination of pastor's appreciation. He's been here one year, and during the month of October, across the conferences, we're acknowledging and showing our pastor's appreciation. So Shiloh is no exception. We have some envelopes. They're available from the ushers. If you are willing and interested in making a love offering to your pastor, please see an usher and they will give you an envelope. And you can turn these into the treasurer's office. Deacon and Deaconess's Day also will be on the 27th, the same day that we are acknowledging Pastor Brutus. There will be a women's ministries meeting next Wednesday night, at next Wednesday evening, October 10th at 6 p.m. And they're planning for their women's ministries day on September 15th. So women, if you're interested in being a part, please be at that meeting. Is December 15th, sorry. Music ministry is scheduled for November 24th, so please mark your calendar. And the big one is basketball tryouts. You know, we have a great team here for JV and or varsity teams. Um, tryouts will be next week, Sabbath night at 7 p.m. in the gym. 
If your age is 13 to 17, you're welcome to try out for the JV, 18 and over for the varsity. There will be a deaconess meeting next week, Sabbath evening, for the final planning of the deacon and deaconesses day and for pastor's appreciation. So it's next week, Sabbath evening. All deacon and deaconesses, please mark your calendars and please be there immediately after Bible studies. And the last announcement for today is Sister Ali Maney would like to meet all the women who are part of the cooking class. She would like to meet with you immediately after divine worship in the front pews over here, just for about two minutes. And I'd like to leave you with a thought for today and for the week. It says, Lord, today, make my heart your heart and my thoughts your thoughts. Have a happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, hold on one second. I forgot one thing. So the ushers, they're passing out these forms, and it reads, Shiloh SDA Nominating Committee Survey. If you are interested, you're a member of Shiloh, and you're interested in serving in one of these offices for the next two years, please fill one, complete one of these out, and return them today. You can return it to an usher, or you can put them in the clerk's office, or if you can give one to me, you can give it to me, or Sister Claudette Powell, or to Pastor. Thank you very much. Have a happy Sabbath, everyone. Hey, good morning, everyone. All right, we're getting ready to um, move forward with our service. At this time, we want to ask that you please stand. Let's greet one another in the Lord. Word. 
heart in my heart The devil, the devil under our feet Yes, we yes, are we're the kingdom building Bible believing people of God We are the kingdom building Bible believing people of God Oh, welcome Welcome to our church With the people of God A call to build his kingdom For the Lord is soon to come we must build our community to help everyone. We are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of God. We are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of God. With praise on our lips, word in our hearts, the devil under our feet. Yes, we are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of God. We are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of God. We are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of God. We are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of God. We pray with praise on our lips. Come on, y'all. Word in our heart. The devil, the devil's under our feet. Yes, we are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of God. We are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of God. We are the kingdom building, Bible believing people of Praise the Lord, everybody. Just want to let everybody know about the youth event that's coming up in next month. Caleb, we can bring up the you can bring up the flyer, Caleb. November 9th to the 11th at Camp Winnipeg in Ashburnham, Massachusetts. We're having the New England South Youth Retreat. Our main speaker is going to be Mara Brassad from the D.C. area. Our musical guest artist is Sheree Tomlin, also from the D.C. area. And we're going to have different workshops on relationships and marriage by our very own Sister Russell. We have workshops on careers by Crystal Jackson, workshops on education by Prince, Deval Prince, and workshop on mentor and facil fac facilitation by Carletta Maurice from the Calvary SDA um, Church. So it's going to be a wonderful event. It was there last year, along with worshiping in a laid back atmosphere. We also have Tom Marie. Relax and have fun. So we had a nice social, had movies and stuff like that. It was around the fireplace. So it was a nice, relaxed atmosphere. So the New England South Youth Retreat from November 9th to 11th. Caleb, I'm if you could play just a short clip of the retreat, please. The flyer? Okay. All right, so if you're interested, um, the early registration deadline is next Sunday. Next Sunday, if you're interested, you could let Tanisha know or you could let me know. The flyers on the boats and board on the side. Have a happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, one of next Sabbath, Dr. Kerr will be here. He'll be speaking, and in the afternoon there will be two workshops: a recertification for those who took the disaster. Um, training back in 2012. There will be a recertification. So um, I have, I do have the names. If I, if you did this, uh, if you did the um, the course, the training, and I didn't call your name, please see me. Um, those names that I have is Janet Russell, Anne Brantley, Ruth Campbell, Harris Davy, Brother Coffee, Boston Coffee. Douglas Huston, John Johnson, Lorenzo Nicholson, Clarence Reed, Emmanuel Russell, Christine Coffey, Odin Graham, Darrell Fletcher, Sister Lee, Sister Vinice Wilson, 
Leslie Smith. If you did the training and um, your name is not on the list, please see me. So this is going to be a recertification. All right, that's going to be our first um, training in the afternoon. And then after that, we're going to have another training. Um, Dr. Curl will do another training, which is open to everybody. And the recertification and also the training, go, there's a fee. On the notice board, there's a fee of $20, OK? Um, so um, if you want to be in that training, it's warehouse, warehouse talking. Please, if you're going to be, if you want to be a, a part of that training, please see me and give me your name. All right? Um, so it's next Sabbath in the afternoon will be the training. So those who, those names that I call for the recertification, just remember, be here and you will be recertified. You'll receive your badge. So if there's a disaster um, in Springfield area, you can go them and show them your badge that you are a member of the um, Adventist Development Relief Agency, um, or ACF, okay? All right, so please, those names that I call, please see me right after divine worship, after communion, so we can um, make sure you will be um, recertified. Thank you very much. And just before we go into the children's story, you know, this week and last week, we have been bombarded in the media by this one um, event with the Supreme Court justice nominee over, over allegations that, that were, you know, when he was in high school, things, uh, stuff that he was being accused of. And that, that whole thing really got to me throughout the entire week. Um, whether you, on the, whether you're, you agree or disagree, it really isn't the issue here. Um, the one thing that really got to me was the fact that um, whether he's right or wrong is that he, people's lives were hurt. And I, it, it made me really think about how we deal with rumors and how we deal with things and making sure that, you know, when we hear something, that we make sure that we don't spread stuff because it's not just the person that gets hurt, but you got family members that get hurt, you have friends who get hurt, people who did not want to come forward are now being forced to come forward because of this very thing. And, and so I just want us as a church to understand that when you hear something about someone, please go to that person. Okay, it's very important that you do that. The Bible tells us that in Matthew 19, uh, it, you know, that is not to be, um, you know, when business meeting or board meeting. It really is supposed to deal with that individual. And the reason why God does it that way is to really help curb gossip, um, rumors, and things of that nature. Our job is to speak to that individual in hopes that we can win our brother or our sister back. Now, obviously, if they don't want to listen, then what do you do? You know, you, you, yeah, you're still praying, but then you go, you, you, you go get somebody, and then you bring that person with you to, for the, not for the sake of beating the person up, by the way, for the sake of what? For the sake of what? Okay, witness, in hopes that that person will listen to the witness of, Two, if they don't listen, according to Matthew 19, what does the Bible say we do? Go get the elders, or you know, and, and you go and you talk to that individual, they won't listen, what do you do? Then you bring them to the church, all right? And hopes to do, what is the ultimate hope? It's to do what? Restora um, reconciliation, restoration. And if that doesn't work, Yeah. If that doesn't work, then um, only then, and only then, um, you know, uh, something happens. But regardless of what takes place or what happens, we must always remember that we are always dealing with people. All right? 
And I'm not saying that that's an excuse to let people do what they want and things of that nature. And we must also understand too, and I know that uh, the, the excuse is that, well, pastor, you know, people, well, I can do whatever I want out of, outside of my house. That's true. When you're outside the church, you can do whatever you want. Right? You have to deal with the consequences, right? But when you are here at God's church, in God's house, it is the church's business, right? Yes or no? So we can't say, well, it's none of my business, your business, I'm going to do it. Now, you can't do that. It is the church's business because when you made that commitment, you took that vow, when you got baptized, you took that vow, you were saying it wasn't just between you and God, but it was also between you, God, and also the church as well too. And but whether we agree with it or not, if something were to happen to you, we all suffer. Oh, we all should suffer. You know, if something were to take place, we all suffer. So, so I just want to encourage each and every one of us and remember that we are part of a community, we are part of a family, and when one hurts, all of us supposed to hurt. All right? So next time you hear something, please go straight to where? You go straight, no, not the source. You, <laughs> you go straight to the, you go straight to the person. Now, do you beat that person up when you, when you go to them? All right, so I will leave you with this, and I want you to say this after me, tact. That is what we are told that we are in need of. We need to be able to speak with tact. You don't go to a person and say, I heard this about you, how dare you, da, 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 tact. You need to have tact, right? Now, I know it doesn't matter how you say stuff sometimes, people tend to, but we still need to have tact in how we talk with people. You don't, the, the issue is not brow beating people, the issue is always restoration. And the Bible says that God has put a word of reconciliation in our mouths. That's, that means that every time you speak, you will speak with a tone of reconciliation. All right. Well, God bless you as we move around, as we move forward with our service. And just know that God loves you very, 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 very much. I have one additional announcement. Remember last week I came to you on behalf of the Community Service Department and the uh, North American Division, um, Hurricane Florence. Um, they say it's the sixth largest storm on record, six costliest, $38 billion in damage. The water is still receding in the Carolinas. And so, as you can imagine, uh, several of our brothers and sisters, several Seventh-day Adventist churches have been significantly damaged. Several of our brothers and sisters there and citizens of the Carolinas uh, have been devastated. Many of them can't, haven't even been able to go back to see their homes. And so last week I explained to you how costly it is to ship things from wherever you are to the disaster area. And so the Adventist uh, Relief Agency, they're uh, desperately trying to cut costs on that. So the plan is that you will make a donation to your church for this relief and we will purchase the items. I, I, I gave you a list, and as you saw in that list last week, it's basic necessities. Uh, diapers for their kids, uh, toiletries, you name it. They have none of these things. Remember that gas stations are not open. Supermarkets are just as damaged as any place else. So the idea is that we make these donations. We will put the monies together and purchase the items through Walmart, who will deliver them for free. Um, to specific sites in uh, North and South Carolina. So um, we had planned on taking up that offering today, but I just want to remind you of it. If you have the offering today, uh, please put it in an envelope, and you could put it in your tithe envelope and write on it 
what it is for, uh, but next week we expect to collect a special offering so that we can help those in need. If, when Springfield was in trouble, people helped from all over the country, remember? When the tornado ripped through, people gave from all over. And so we just wanna be able to do the same thing for our brothers and sisters there in the Carolinas. So remember, next week, okay, bring your uh, money so that we can help out. And I know we're always asking, but it's because there's always a need. And that sacrifice that we make, God will, will always bless us um, for it. At this time, let us stand together as we sing our opening hymn, number 152. Number 152, tell me the story of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. One accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our Riding on the cloud, 
Shining like the sun at the trumpet call Lift your voice, so you will do believe And out of Zion's hill salvation call There's no God like Jehovah 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 there's no God like Jehovah. 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 On the cloud, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, so you will do believe, out of Zion's hill salvation come. There's no God like Jehovah, 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 like him, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 No, there's no God like him. There's no God like Jehovah. My God, there's no God like him. There's no God like Jehovah. No, there's no behold, he comes riding on the cloud, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Solid rock I stand, all other ground is 
power of the presence of the Lord. Oh, the power of the presence of the Lord. You know, I say this every time I sing it. But without his presence, we are lost. Without his presence to shield and protect us from all the wild the devil has out there, we are lost. But oh, the power of the presence. Be set free. Sometimes we're caught up in sin and we don't know how to get ourselves out of it because we depend on us to get us out of it. But it's only through the presence and the blood of God that we are able to triumph. Oh, the power of the presence of the Lord. Oh, the power of the presence of the Lord. this morning because you're worthy of all our praise. We want to thank you, O oh Lord, for being the God that you are to us, for loving us in spite of us, and you does not treat us as our sin deserve, O oh Lord, but your love has been shining upon us, keeping us, protecting us, and providing for us that which we cannot provide for ourselves. And Lord, we come this morning and recognize that we need you now more than ever before. Recognize that without you, we cannot make it. Without you, we are nothing, O oh Lord, and we pray that you may empty us of self, that you may empty us of that which is not like you, O oh Father, the sin that separates us from thee, take it away from us. Wash us now and make us whole. Make us worthy to call you Abba, Father. Help us to know that with you we can do all things. Help us to know that with you we can overcome the trials, the tribulation, the temptation that the devil toward us, oh Father. But without you we cannot do anything. We pray for the anointing and the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We realize that we cannot make it in this life without your leading in our life. And we pray, Lord, that you may not take your spirit from us, 
but that your spirit may lead us into all truth, oh Father. We come this morning around this communion table. Recognize, oh Lord, how much you have been so good to us. You have bled and died on that whole rugged cross for our sin and for the sins of this world. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify your name because your name is worthy to be praised. When we look back over our life and see what you have done, O oh Father, how much you have saved us and brought us this far, O oh Lord, where we can come in your house this morning and praise and honor you because all that you have done. Keep us, Lord, because we cannot keep ourselves. We need you, Lord. Bless us, provide for us, and deliver us from the evil one. He's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. But help us to keep our hands in your hands and know that with Christ we can do all things. Oh God, we pray for those that are sick among us this morning. We pray for all those that are bereaved. Comfort them in their time of loss at this time. I pray for Sister Vivian Scott. Continue to touch and anoint her and keep her. Uphold her, O oh Lord, with your other hand. I pray that you may be with Sister Ann Stennett also. Yes. That you may bless her and keep her and provide for her. I pray in a very special way for Ella Anglin and Sister Anglin. Dad, O oh Lord, that you may be with him. Touch and anoint him. Provide for him, O oh Lord, that which he cannot provide for himself. I pray, O oh Lord, for those that have been affected by natural disaster here in the United States, in the Carolina, and overseas, oh Father. Your people are crying out to you for help. Some are wondering what is going on in this world. But you said when we see all these things that are happening around us, that we are to look up because our redemption joy at night. And we are looking up to you this morning. We are holding on to the end of your garment because only you can save us in this serious time. Bless our service, our communion service. Bless all our members. Bless all our guests that are here. Help us, O oh Lord, to realize that you're going to prepare a place for us. And you're coming back for us, but for people who surrender, who give their heart, their mind, their body and soul to you. Bless our pastor and his family. Bless him as he open your word this morning. Use him for your glory and for your honor. Bless our nominating process, O oh Father. I pray that you may be with them. Let your spirit guide. Let your spirit lead. In Jesus' name, control of this service. We commit ourselves to you once again. Bless us, keep us, and protect us. In Jesus' name, we ask this prayer. Amen. Oh, the power of, of the, the bread. bread. The Lord, the power, oh, the power of the presence of the Lord. Be set free, healed and delivered. 
The scripture reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43 will be reading verses 1 and 2. Let us all stand. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 and 2, and we will read together both verses. And 43. Isaiah 43, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. We'll read together. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. The Lord add his blessing to the hearers and to the readers of his holy word. You may be seated.
Let us bow our heads and pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts before we partake in the service of communion. And may we see Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Daniel is often seen as the cousin of the book of Revelation. The book of Daniel chapter 3, we are told, is a picture of what is going to take place in the last days. You know the story that took place in Daniel chapter 3 where the three Hebrew boys were put through a severe test, where they were thrown into a fiery furnace. But then when you go to Revelation chapter 13, it says that there will come a time when you will not be able to buy nor sell lest ye have the mark of the beast. There you have two instances where the people of God are being tried. Two instances where the people of God, their faith, uh, their faith, one where their faith is being tried and one where their faith has stand through the test of time. And I love what the Bible says there in Daniel, and I want you to go there with me quickly because I just want to bring up this one point here as it relates to our scripture reading and see what the word of God is trying to tell us. Let's go to Daniel chapter 3. You already know the story. Um, Nebuchadnezzar said to all those who were there, if those who hear the, the music, he says, when you hear it, bow down to the, uh, bow down to the statue and worship me, those who do not will be thrown into the fiery furnace. And I want you to see something here. You already know what the Bible says there, but there's a key verse in here I want us to see. Now, by the time we get to verse 25, the children of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are already thrown into the fiery furnace. The king by then is upset. He's sitting on his throne. He is satisfying himself, watching what, what's happening, watching what's going on. He threw three men, how many? Three men into the fiery furnace. And the Bible says in verse 5, and this is important for us to see here, not verse 5, but verse, here it is. But verse, let's start with verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound. How did they fall down? They fell down bound, bound into the what? Midst of the burning, fiery, what everybody? So when they were thrown in, the Bible says they fell down bound, dead smack right into the very midst. But notice this. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished. In other words, he was shocked, surprised, and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. Verse 25, this is the PowerPoint right here. He answered and said, lo, I see four men. Now, how were they thrown into the fire? How were they seen by the king? How were they thrown? How were they seen? Our oh, friends, I want you to understand this one thing as we're getting ready to take communion. How the devil, how the devil binds us is different than how God delivers us. He was thrown in bound. The system of the enemy there in Babylon, seeking to steal, 
kill, and destroy, seeking to rob you of all that is good and decent. He threw them bound. But when the king saw them, the Bible says instead of seeing them, how were they bound? Down into the midst. But this time they were what? Loose. I'm glad that when God is dealing with his people, God deals with them in a way that he now looses them. He looses them so that they can stop walking. And by the way, what was interesting about this, remember the men that took them and threw them into the fiery furnace? The Bible says that they didn't even get close to the furnace. They dropped dead. Point that I'm trying to make is that when you are serving God, even when the fire is hot, others around you, those of your persecutors, you will see them dead. They may drop you into the fiery furnace bound, but when Jesus is with you, he looses you so that even in the midst of the fiery furnace, you are seen walking. You know, a long time ago, I used to always ask myself, how is it that these men were walking in the fiery furnace? Bible says he saw four men loose and they were walking. Now, we know the fourth one was Christ. Now, remember the story of Adam. God put us all where in Adam. Whatever happened to Adam happened to the entire human race. What happened to Adam? What happened to the entire human race? Now, check this out. God put us where? In Christ. Whatever happened in the same manner, whatever happened to Adam happened to the entire human race. Whatever happened to Jesus happened to the entire human race. What was Jesus doing in the fiery furnace? He was loose and he was what? And he was walking. Where did God put us? In who? He put us in Christ. What was Jesus doing in the fiery furnace? He was walking around loose. What was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego doing in the fiery furnace? He was walking around loose. Whatever Jesus was doing, that's what the three Hebrew boys were doing as well. In other words, only the life of Christ can stand the fiery test of trials. I love what the text says in Isaiah. The Bible says there, and the, um, the, one that, uh, the one that was read to us in Isaiah 43, verse 1, notice what it says. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee. What did he do? He created thee, O Jacob. Now, who was Jacob? He was, what, what, what's that mean? He was a deceiver, right? Now, notice what the Bible says. O, uh, uh, o uh, said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. How were we created? We were created or we were shaped in sin and iniquity. Like Jacob, a deceiver, a surplanter, one trying to get over, a manipulator. But I remember the time when Jacob was trying to go back home. And the Bible says he sent all his family over and he remained there. And the Bible says all night long he was wrestling with food. He was wrestling with God himself. And Jacob, and when they got to, when, they, when, when the, the Bible says when they, the daybreak was, was coming, the, the angel said to Jacob, what? Let me go, for the day is coming. But what did Jacob say? Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you do what, everybody? Unless you bless me. And then what did the angel say? What's your name? And what did he say? He said, my name is Jacob. Jacob was who was created. But now notice this. The Bible says, and he that formed thee, before we are, before we are formed, Obviously, we are created, but now Jacob has gone through the process of being formed or transformed in the very, not, in the very uh, character of God. And notice now what his name is, Israel. 
Now, this is what I want you to understand. When you go back to our story now, when you have Shadrach, Meshach, and who, everybody? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or some people say Abednego, or whatever you want to call it. This is what I want you to realize. This group over here, <laughs> this is what I want you to realize. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was walking through that, was walking in the fire, and they were walking around loose, not even their clothes were a singe. They were walking in the newness of the one who not only created them, but the one that also formed them. Their change did not take place when they walked, when they were walking in the fire. The change took place before they were walking in the fire. How we handle trials and circumstances depends on where we are while we are walking through. And, some, and the reason why some people give up is because maybe the change never occurred in their life while, before they were walking in the fire. But I want you to know that when you, when you say, Jesus, I am serving you and you purpose in your heart, I don't care how hard the circumstances are, no fire can destroy God's people. You know, the Bible says here that when you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. The Bible says that when the flood, when the flood uh, comes to try to overtake you, it will not overtake you. I don't care how bad the circumstances are in your life. I don't care what it is that you are dealing with. Oh, I love that verse that says, when David says, you know, David was going through a whole lot of stuff in his life at the time. And, the, and somebody asked David a question, well, man, what are you going to do? David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Somebody said to David, David, you walked around ways that seem, that seem, uh, 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 that seem to have people waiting to, to hurt you and people waiting to kill you. David said, don't bother me with that the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures somebody said some, somebody said to the psalmist but what about all this stuff that is happening I can I can hear David saying the Lord is my strong tower the Lord is my strength and my salvation whom shall I fear our friends today I want you to understand that no fire prepared by the devil can harm the children of God. Did somebody, remember when I was in my last church, somebody said, well, pastor, are you, are you got to watch out? Are you got, man, listen, guys, I go home and sleep. <laughs> I'm not worried about who's laying in wait people having meetings and I'm, nobody's doing that here. I'm just, I'm not worried about people doing this, people doing that because I know there's somebody while I'm asleep, while I'm sleeping like a baby, you know, when I sleep, my wife is here, she'll tell you, when I sleep, I like to hold my wife while I'm sleeping. I like to enjoy the comfort of her warmth while I'm sleeping. So I ain't got time to worry about who's doing this over here and who's doing that over here and who's doing that over here. I know that there is somebody that is looking out for each and every single one of us. And the king, the, the, the king thought that he was, the king thought that he was going to cause them evil. But God was getting ready to do something amazing. 
And the Bible says that at that particular moment when Nebuchadnezzar saw them, Nebuchadnezzar, the thing was so amazing that he couldn't even remain sitting. He had to stand up and he said, did not I cast three men in here? Who are, what's the, the fourth one? And that fourth one looks like the sun. So this is what this tells me. Every trial, every situation that you and I face, it is meant for our enemies to witness the Son of Man in your working on your behalf. You go to work and they tell you that you got three days. They tell you that, man, this thing is, uh, your, your, your time here is almost up. But man, God says, you don't have to worry. You don't have to go back and cuss everybody out, get mad, talk about the boss like he's a dog. You ain't gotta do, you don't have to do all that. In your heart, you just walk away smiling. You start singing the old hymn of Zion. And I don't know what's in your heart, but I can sing the song, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. While I'm going back, I'm singing songs of Zion in my head, knowing that God will make this way, God will, God will fix this situation. He will, he will make a way out of no way for you and I to be able to deal with that problem and that burden. You don't have to react like everybody else. You go, listen guys, I went to court with a member of one of my churches. When I got to the courthouse, Every single person that appeared before the judge, I mean, I was there for about an hour and a half hearing, where is your lawyer? Everybody that went before him, where is your lawyer? Where is your lawyer? Lawyer, he, but, uh, the, the guy got fed up. After, uh, after being there, everybody trying to appear before him without a representation, he said, where is your lawyer? Finally, he said, do not appear before me without a lawyer or else. And I'm sitting in the back of the room like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Finally, it was the member's turn. Appeared before the judge. Looked at the member and said, how do you plead? The member said, not guilty. Then he looked at me and he said, who are you? I said, I, I, I'm, I, I'm the pastor of his, of his church. And then he looked down at his docket and he looked back to me and he said, do you believe him, sir? I said, yes, I do, your honor. He said, case dismissed. We had, a school, we had a school where the state was giving the, our principal a hard time and everybody was telling us, man, th these people are hard, these people are mean, these people are, these people are they, they, they're about to close the school down. And so we set an appointment, we set a meeting, I went, went to the meeting and I'm telling you, these people came and I, I'm thinking they're gonna go off and, and start talking really loud, get real loud and all that. They came down, they came to the place, sir. We, 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 we would like to talk with you. I mean, they were like, they were docile. They were, they were not as loud. The point that I'm trying to make with you, friends, the only problem that you and I have is the problem that we fail to give to him when we are facing problems. And people tell me, you know, I guess perception is one thing. I'll go to a board meeting, when my last church, I would go to board meetings and we would have nice board meetings, but you know, when a person would raise their voice, oh, pastor, you had a bad board meeting. A person raising their voice does not determine whether or not if a meeting is bad or not. It's all perception. And I just want you to know, before I take my seat, Shiloh is going through. God did not put us here in order for us to fail. This may be the fire that you and I are facing right now. You may see things 
right now that says, wow, Shiloh is not what it used to be or whatever the case may be. But I want you to know, friends, today, remember perception. While you may see it as a problem, I see it as an opportunity. The Chinese, do you know that they don't have a word, a character, or a meaning for the word problem in their dictionary? So whenever they see a problem, you know how they define it? Opportunity. That's why when 9-11 hit, all those electronics that you see people going through, where is that stuff made? In China, when it happened to us, we saw that as catastrophe. When it happened to us, they saw that as opportunity. It's how we perceive it. It's how we look at it. And I imagine when the three Hebrew boys got in there, I believe with all my heart when they got in there, as they said, we are not careful to answer you on this matter. We've already thought about it. We've already worked it out in our mind. We don't need to go have a board meeting to try to work this thing out. King, we will not bow down. And even if God does not help us, we still will not bow down to you. And I believe that as they were doing that in their mind, they're thinking they, they probably remembered how when the children of Israel Israel mounted on the left side, mounted on the right side. The cloud was right before them, but right behind them was Pharaoh's army coming. And God looked at the situation while they were fussing and while they were praying. God said to Moses, it was almost as if God said to Moses, why are you sitting up here praying for? Didn't I tell you to go forward? Sometimes we waste our time praying sometimes. When we know what God is telling us to do, we want God to change his mind. That's one reason why we're doing it. But God said to Moses, why are you sitting up here praying? Go forward. And the Bible says when they went forward, they couldn't go backwards. They could only go forward. And Moses lifted up that staff, but I want you to know that when they went forward, all of a sudden an east wind came out of nowhere. Yes, that's God. And departed that Red Sea. But you know the miraculous thing about that situation is this. When the sea came back to its form, the Bible says that the Egyptians drowned in the sea with their armor floating in the water. Armor does not float. But I believe that it was there to remind all those who would see that when God gets ready to do something, he doesn't do it small. When God is getting ready to do something, he doesn't do it small. No, 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 no. He does it so that every single one, even our enemies, no matter who they may be, that they may know there's still a God in Israel. While we're getting ready to go take, while we're getting ready to go take communion, I want to have a special prayer. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he will do for you. There are families in here today that are going through. There are husband and wives who are on the verge, whom the enemy is playing tricks with their mind, who are no longer operating on faith, but they're operating on feeling, on how they feel. And God is wanting to do something in your family today. You may think that it's done and over with, but I want you to know that there is no problem that's too hard for God. Or perhaps you may know of a family that is on the verge of, destru of, dest of destruction. You can represent them as well. So this is what I want to do. 
before we go and wash each other's feet. I want to do so with a clear mind, don't you? How many of you right now believe that God, now you don't have to raise your hands, but if you're one of the ones that is going through, how many of you know, I mean, do you know that God can fix your marriage? He can fix your situation. Guys, listen. Don't forget, don't ever forget this. One of the reasons why one of the reasons why we are so messed up and caught up and whatever in our is because we are looking too much to that other person. We're depending on them for our joy, for our happiness. We're depending on them for our, uh, for our satisfaction. And when they don't come through, they let us down. Make Jesus your joy so that no matter how much they act the fool you won't see them as being your enemy but you'll see the one behind them trying to get you to lose your joy and lose your peace I'm going to ask all my elders if you can just come I want to have a consecrated prayer for our family friends this is serious like the three Hebrew boys, you are walking in the midst of your fir fiery furnace right now. Your children won't listen to you. Your children are causing pain in your family. Today, God wants to do something. As a matter of fact, I'm, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask, can two elders go to the back door we're, and then two elders to the side, two elders over here, and then two elders to the front? So two to the back. We are going to form an alliance around God's church. Listen, guys, the devil is not going to win. He is not going to win. Stop. Listen, don't quit. He is not going to win. He is not going to win. Elder, can you stand right right here? Can you stand right here? Um, Elder, can you? Yes. Elder Fletcher, you're fine. You are. I, I know, Elder, he just likes being in your presence. So. And this is what I want to take place. Whether your family is going through or not, whether you are in that situation, we are all in this together. And so I'm going to ask every husband and wife to stand right now. Every, if, you, even, if your spouse is not here, you stand. If you know of a husband and wife that's going through something, please stand for them. They are, the enemy is not going to win. He's already lost. He's defeated. He is a liar. That's why I'm saying don't look at your situation. Don't look at it. He's lying. Your situation right now is a lie. It's a lie. Focus on what God can do. I'm going to ask at this time, those, if you're not married, but you, you know a situation, you, you, there's issues even in your home, I'm going to ask that you stand as well too. And this is the promise that we are going to claim. Isaiah 43 and verse 3. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. You will not be burned. Friends, please, let's not play with God. Tell God that 
I want you to tell God that you will no longer depend on your feelings. That's the enemy. I don't want to be with you no more. I want to go to a divorce. That's the enemy. Any feelings that you have that wants to rip apart your family, that's not Jesus. That's the enemy. And today we are going to pray. I'm going to ask my elders, can you please just put your hands, raise your hands. Just raise your hands. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, on this day of communion, which is supposed to symbolize fellowship, togetherness, one in Christ, unity. But Father, we come to you with sad hearts. Hearts, Father, that have been broken. Hearts that have been hurt and bruised. And Father, we stand before you together as one to say to you that what you intended for marriage to be, we want that to be the example in our lives right now. Father, there are individuals right now and while they're playing the happy-go-lucky person, deep down inside, Father, they are hurting. Deep down inside, they are bruised. Not by people that they don't know, but people that they do know. And right now, Father, we, they are in need of your amazing grace. And so, Father, please come draw nigh to them right now. As we, as we claim the very life of your son, Jesus. Father, we ask that instead of where there is disunity, where there is discord, that in Christ you will now bring love and unity. That in Christ you will bring togetherness. Father, we are asking right now that please take away the feelings. Feelings. Feelings of hurt. Feelings, Father, of wanting to quit. Take those things away. Fill our lives and our minds and our hearts with the mind of Christ. Believing, Father, that in him, restoration is possible. In Christ, healing is already assured. In Christ, our situation has already been solved. In Christ, whatever we deemed as being a problem has already been worked out. For you have said in your word, be not afraid, be not discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And so, Father, as we go, as we go to wash feet, May we go with the faith that you have already worked it out. And now, Father, when we are dealing with one another, let us not see them. Let us not look at them as being our enemy, for there's only one enemy. And that is the deceiver, that is the trickster, that is the liar, he is the murderer, he is not our friend, he's the real enemy. Let's not look at them as our enemy. 
but let us look at our loved ones as opportunities to pray for them. Let us look to Jesus as our source of joy and strength, believing that the battle is not ours, but the battle belongs to you. And so, Father, we are holding our peace, for you will fight for us. Oh, Jesus, please say a word for us right now. Say a word for us now. Intercede for us now. Don't let us go down. Don't let us give up on one another. But say a word, a word that will bring us close. And Father, if it be, no, Father, I know it's your will. As I'm looking at the, as the heavens and the, and, and the sky are real, tonight, today, Father, we're asking for you to work this thing out. Father, be with our children. There are parents here, Father, who, had it not been for you, would be in an in insane asylum right now. Some are on the verge of losing their mind because they don't like how they see, they don't like what they are seeing. But Father, your promise to us is that you would save our children. And so, Father, we come giving them to you. And, Father, if we have mistreated them by yelling at them, if we have mistreated them by calling them names, please forgive us. Let them see Christ in us no matter how they are behaving. And let our faith take hold of your word so that whenever they're acting in a way that is contrary to your word, we can always remember the word. You will save our children and we will treat them as if they are already saved. Father, only you can do that for us. And Father, before we close, there are other pressing needs please there are some who are getting ready to go to court even before they go on that day may your angels go before them take care of that matter that they may know that you are the living God there are some that doctors have said that they have to they have to have an operation on something Father, you be the doctor that does the operation. You send them back to the hospital so that doctors can see that there's only one true doctor and that is you. Father, I know you can do it. There are some, Father, the bank have said, if you don't pay this by such and such, they will lose their house. Father, it is you who supplies all our needs. I'm asking, we're asking by your grace that you would meet their needs. Father, whatever else the issues may be, work it out. Work it out. And help us to be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And if there's anything else, Father, that I have not said, please forgive me. You know the, your people's hearts. Work it out. Work it out. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hasn't he worked it out? Isn't he working it out right now? So you can leave out of here how? Joyful in who? All right, so what if that problem appears again? Are you going to allow that problem to get you down? Why not? He's working it out. He's working it out. Amen, amen. Praise God. I know you thought we forgot about the offering, but we didn't. Uh, we, were just, we were just waiting for all of you to get here so that we could take it from you. Today's offering is for the local church budget. 
Pastor Dennis Childers tells this following story. A few months after my wife and I were married, I quit my steady job as a security guard and went to work for Rose Hill Cemetery in Whittier, California. I worked in the sales department and my income was based on commission. Sales of any kind can be difficult, but selling cemetery property is extremely difficult. About the time I went to work for Rose Hills, my wife was laid off from her steady job. And we found ourselves in the middle of a worker's comp case for the next two years. My wife received a small compensation each month during this case, but I was hardly making any sales. One month we had $500 in the bank and our $500 rent was almost due. I contemplated holding back the tithe from my wife's small check until things got better for us. But then a thought came to me. If I did this, it would become easy to continue this practice in the future, and the tithe that we owed God would snowball to such a point that we could never make it up. That Sabbath, I gave back to God what was rightfully his. Amen. And that following week, I made a sale. Amen. God was truly faithful to my wife and me as we stepped out in faith and were faithful to him. He will always be faithful. Yes. Amen? Amen? That is the God we serve. Yes. Many of us have proved him over and over. He will always be faithful. Amen? Amen. Our deacons will now wait on us, uh, prepare to collect the tithes and offerings, after which we will prepare to separate for the ordinance of humility. Let's bow our heads. Father, we are so grateful for your faithfulness. You always keep your promise, God. So we pray that today we will keep our promises and our obligations to you. As we return these tithes and offerings, we pray, Lord, that we may not do so grudgingly but that we may return what is rightfully yours joyfully. Lord, in light of all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, in light of your faithfulness and your righteousness, in light of all your grace, we just want to return an offering to say thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. We pray for a blessing upon your people, who have returned to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The deacons will now wait on us for today's tithes and offerings.
um, just before. Amen. Just before we uh, go to our respective places, um, before we sing the song to separate us, we just want to remind you that when we go to our places, please let's remember that we are still in the, our worship. We're not having a benediction. We're just letting you out. So the, the women, the ladies, please, uh, we're going to ask the deaconess, the deacons, if the deaconesses, if you could just uh, remember to have the people singing, um, the deacons as well, have the people singing. Um, we're going to ask our deacons, please do not let anybody running around in the foyer area. Uh, some of you may have to leave, we understand that. Um, but if you do have to leave, um, please, um, as you're leaving out, let's leave out with a word of praise on our lips. Um, let's just remember that we are in, um, we are in our, our Father's business and we wanna make sure that we still have that same, same mindset. If you choose to remain here in the sanctuary, we'll have somebody here leading out in song so that, so that the same, what, whatever's happening downstairs will happen here um, as well. All right, so um, let us, uh, we're going to, I think we're gonna sing hymn number 100 and the ladies will be asked to go first and then afterwards the men. So the